FM This is the finale of this extremely rewarding episode and in the finale we are discussing the next generation reforms for the banking sector which can help finance the future with greater ease and we have the most appropriate set of guests i have with me mr amitabh kant the ceo of niti aayog i have with me janma jaya sinha who has been involved with banking reforms in the country from practically the last 30 years and sanjeev chadda uh, managing director and ceo of bank of baroda the bank which has just managed a, a, a very important merger of uh, dena bank and vijay bank into itself and in that sense is heralding reform in the banking sector gentlemen thank you very much for joining me well mr khan since we are going to talk next gen reforms uh, you know it's a no holds barred interview so my first question is wantonly provocative hmm. the government has already reduced or given permission to reduce its stake in a large number of uh, public sector undertakings to below 50% do you think the time has come to make the government stake below 50 although single largest shareholder in public sector banks the government has taken a very far sighted approach on a couple of things in recent times one in public sector organizations it has announced openly yes. that it will bring its equity down very sharply mm. uh it it has opened up in the case of uh disinvestment on its offloading on idbi it has said that the it will invite I, an ipo on lic so i think uh the next possible step could be to say that how do we provide greater flexibility and because india needs to grow mm. india can't grow without capitalizing its banks yes and uh without giving it greater freedom and flexibility But i'm you know, just asking you if you if, if i have your buy in for making government stake 49 for instance yeah. that itself is a quantum leap yeah, are you are, do you think no, that the time has come for there's that there's no harm in even bringing government stake even lower than 49 okay. i mean how does it matter once you brought it below 50% yes. you can bring it down to 26% yes but you have to build in accountability somewhere but what will happen as a consequence of your bringing it below 50 is that the value of these banks will rise enormously enormously yes and because of that any amount of offloading will lead to them being able to capitalize these banks will get capitalized and this is particularly important in the context of uh, the finance minister not having provided additional allocation to these banks uh, in the current budget and saying that they will look for the capital markets okay well i'm really glad that i have your buy in on this uh, issue i think in uh, your case mr sinha it is uh, converting uh, preaching to the converted absolutely <clears throat> see there are three parts that we should bring out mm-hmm. first that nationalized banks and the indian depositor have saved indian democracy yes because in 70s and 80s when we were a basket case mm-hmm. the only people who gave us money were the indian depositor and so we had our plan expenditure coming from you know crr and okay. slr and then we had priority sector which was directing credit and at that time we even had a credit authorization scheme where we would allocate credit to uh, the corporates but now india is a 3 trillion dollar almost 3 trillion dollar economy now india is a place which is getting one of the highest F- fdis and fpis in the world we are on every one's allocation and whatever may happen you know we may go slower or faster but we are on a track to a 7 8 trillion dollar economy in the next 10 to 12 years right i mean we are on yes, that path yes yes so we have reached the time where we should really think what are the things that will unlock mr kant has repeatedly said credit growth has to take off credit growth has to take off i tell you if government brings its holding down below 50% what happens the government doesn't give capital it gets capital the price to book increases from 0.5 to 1.5 hr autonomy comes in all this discussion on cbi etc goes away and you have a revitalization of this sector this will also be the role model sector in the world mm-hmm. because private banks have led to the global financial crisis 
think of this new mix where government is the single largest owner and market forces are driving for accountability. And I think it will be a model for which the rest of the world will follow. Since I have two people's buy-in, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Chanda, as the person on the job, will, will it release a lot of energies for the banking sector if on a daily basis you don't have the CVC and the CBI and the CAG on your back? I think what we should be looking at is precisely what Mr. Uh, Kant is saying and what General Jay is saying, that we need to see how our public sector banks become public-owned institutions yes. with a wider ownership. Yeah, I, I agree with you that at the moment there isn't capital waiting to, uh, Indeed. you know. And, and not only that, there are, are, they are no entities which can actually support a fully private sector environment. Okay. So public sector banks constitute value, yes. this value must be preserved and this value must be grown. So therefore, I think the direction which is being indicated makes a lot of sense. Yes. But at the same time, if we value financial stability, public sector banks need to have a strong role going ahead also, even while a transformation takes place. Just to finish this part of the argument, that uh, you know, maybe a very good first step would be to move banks into the Companies Act from the Banking Regulation Act. You think that would be a good first step? You know, firstly, let me say that the public sector banks have done a remarkable job. Yes. You know. I mean, to have opened such a vast number of bank accounts during the period 2014 to sure. 2018, every second yes. bank account that was opened across the world was opened in India. So and nobody else could have done it except no, I, the public sector of India. Absolutely. And, and the record of the private sector yeah. banks over there is dismal. Yeah. So I mean, I take your point on that. So, you know, I mean, if we are able to lift vast segments of our population above the poverty line and being able to put money directly into the bank account using direct benefit transfer mm. and use the power of the jam trinity it will be all possible because of the performance of the public sector bank and the huge political yes. will yes. particularly of the prime minister himself yes but now that bank accounts have been opened Open. and you have a 1200 million biometrics and yeah. you have 1200 million mobiles in india you will need to radically move forward and i think move away from completely government ownership to public ownership. Okay. And what is important is that banks in India still remain heavily undercapitalized. Yes. How do you capitalize them? And given the fiscal constraints of government, it's not possible to use government resources to capitalize the banks. It's very important that credit rises in yeah, India. Of course. And the, India, as I want to make this point again, the private debt to GDP ratio is the lowest yes, yes. in the world. And therefore, countries post-World War II, which grew, Japan, Korea, China, Taiwan, all grew on the back of private debt. And therefore, if India is to rapidly grow into a $5 trillion and a $10 trillion economy, which is the dream of every Indian on the vision of the Prime Minister, then we need to capitalize, capitalize these banks yes. and enable them to lend but uh, just to finish this, you think that moving banks to, uh, uh, you know, away from the Banking Regulation Act into uh, uh, Companies Act could be a good first step? Corporatization is necessary even for a level playing field. Yeah. All banks should be under the Companies Act. I mean, the government can be the single largest Story. owner or even the majority owner. Mm. But it should be under the Companies Act. Because without <coughs> that, it will be very difficult. It will require a huge amount of amendments to the Act and so on. Uh, it will take a long time uh, to, to be able to do this. So lock, stock and barrel moving under Companies Act That's would be a simpler legislative... Or it's one policy option available before the government. And would be a simpler one, you think? Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to take a break on that note, but thereafter, some reforms that can be imagined even under the current dispensation from our experts in a minute. Welcome back to the finale of Financing the Future, our ongoing series in which we have been discussing several themes of banking and banking reforms. So I've been speaking with Mr. Amitabh Kant, uh, Mr. Janma Jayasena and Mr. Sanjeev Chedda. Well, uh, with, to speak only about uh, the reforms under the current dispensation, because we need a legislative move to bring government uh, stake below 51. So let's discuss the present uh, situation where banks do feel that they have the watch of the CVC and the CBI and the CAG on them. 
can be cocooned themselves. Mr. Kant. So it's uh, important that these banks must be very, very professionally and board managed. It's uh, even if uh, government uh, uh, is the is the majority owner mm. or has a substantial stake in them. I mean, how we need to look at best practices. I mean, how how is it? How does the government of Singapore manage its bank? Mm. I mean, manages it through through the through the board, which is extremely professional and, and independent. Yeah, and I think the government of India, uh, all credit to the government that has taken a series of measures. Yes, the BBB to, is in yeah. place. So, to, to uh, other than the Bank Bureau, it's taken a series of measures to professionalize uh, the board, to get professional CEOs like Mr. Chadda there, mm -hmm. and to ensure that we are able to insulate them. And particularly, we've recently had two very far-reaching circulars issued by the government, uh, one by the CVC himself, who's insulated many of these possible business failures as distinct from a possible fraud by putting a committee there. And the Department of Financial Services issued another circular, uh, which said that uh, uh, you know every bank loan is not a fraud and responsibility exactly. uh, is not. So it's t government itself yeah. is taking the far internal committee itself yeah. can you know so give far, a, so a clean far check. reaching reforms have now been made, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the way forward now is really that professionalization outstanding human resources in these banks, getting the best possible professionals to lead and drive this bank. Uh, and that is what the government is aiming to do. Uh, Mr. Sinha, in this context, you know, there was in 2018 a Government of India rule that uh, all, or instruction I think, that all NPAs over 50 crore should be examined for fraud. Do you think that rule itself can be rescinded for the moment? Yeah, you know, actually the government, to be fair, is trying has, to take steps to yeah, actually has dial diluted that back, it. right? So that is sure at that stage what was happening is because the NPAs were rising, there was a lot of panic around what to do to continue. Yes, yes, the Nira so Modi episode. I, that I get. The but can is, it be rescinded, you think? You know, I think many of these are being brought back. You know, it's not even a question of rescind or not. It is a matter of how you do things. Okay. And a lot of these can actually, you know, you don't have to keep changing. You can mm. just stop doing certain things. Okay. And it re means the same thing. Look, we are changing even today. Mm. I will say that there are a set of things that nationalized banks and private banks are doing. We are moving away from documents to data, you yes. know what I mean, in terms of lending. If you look at the, the kind of information that you can have, you can do a lot with it. The biggest challenge for state-owned banks today in India is talent. Okay. This is the biggest gap and we n need to address it. Till 2000, the best people used to join government. So those who were lucky would join the IES like Mr. Kant. Those who were not so lucky would join the RBI like me. Okay. And, you know, I mean, it was like that. It yeah. was a set of things that you would always want to join. After liberalization, you know, there the disparities in compensation and career progression, etc., started to really widen. So now the recruitment into these organizations is of a lower level of people than they used to be earlier. Yeah. You would rather the, go to the IIMs, and if you don't get no, there, then. Even if you didn't go to the IIMs, you would rather join an access bank than join a, a union bank. Oh, because you know? the perks are. Yeah, good. you are getting, you are going to get more money, you will grow faster, etc., etc. Look at what is happening. Market share of nationalized banks has been falling and it's been falling rapidly. So when market share is falling of one Personal segment... Personnel is one very strong reason why... And this uh, is a personnel business. And this is an issue which has to be addressed. You know, in China, which is supposed to be communist, in a state-owned bank, the salary of a general manager will be many multiples of the salary of Mr. Chadda. Absolutely. So it is interesting, right? I mean, how it is that it doesn't even, you know, you need to make HR competitive. Otherwise, how do you operate? Absolutely. Take a point. So I think this is uh, 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 you know, one of the final questions I have is on consolidation. That I thought was a, a kind of a reform because at least in the resolution table, you didn't have 26 banks to resolve. Do you think uh, consolidation is uh, giving benefits already? So let me just again touch a bit on what Mr. Mm -hmm. Sinha said in terms of the autonomy and the challenges. So personally, having worked 30 years in public sector banks, 
I believe that in most cases, you have a far, far higher degree of autonomy than you would have in a private sector company. I'm not at all taking away from the issues we talk of the triple C, but we should not really take alibis in so many ways where we can actually perform. Mm. So I don't think it's such a issue really. That is very good so, to hear. Again, I've, I've worked in the subsidiary of SBI internationally here within India. I don't think there have been too many challenges to that. Talent is a challenge, but we also must recognize when it comes to lower levels, the kind of talent that you require at lower levels is very good in public sector banks, very often better than private sector banks, simply because of the kind of salaries we play. There are challenges which are of two sorts. One, can you retain talent, which is an issue. So yeah, I think poached. we need to, yeah, so that's one thing. Talent movement cannot be a one-way street only from public sector to private sector. How can you make sure it's a two-way street? I think that's something which is very important. Second part is new competencies are required. New areas of the economy are developing. Those cannot be addressed from within the bank. So you need to have lateral recruitment there, which is where I believe BOB has been a path blazer. First. It has done things which have never been possible in public sector banks, mm -hmm. but which also indicates that they are possible in public sector banks, mm -hmm. right? So we have, as of now, people from the market who are running supply chain financing, fintech, doing commercial vehicle loans, and a host of other areas. So I think that's one thing which you need to address. We need to accept what Mr. Sinha is saying, that. HR is a central challenge, but we, we can, as you said, within the current dispensation also find ways and means of doing that. Okay. The second issue is what you talked about, about the consolidation piece. I think we need to really understand that what is it that we set out to do, right? So it is a fact that today, public sector banks for the foreseeable future are going to be part of the landscape. But do you require 26 of them or 20 of them? Probably not. So therefore, if we accept that what we need is public sector banks, but maybe three or four, which are strong, viable, uh, which can do large ticket loans in terms of wholesale loans, which can attract market talent, I do believe this is the right way to go. And in terms of BOB's journey, uh, I think the, 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 the roadmap was that you need to, again, reach a certain place in a certain time, but do it in a non-disruptive manner. So I think BOB has been able to do it. Do that. So one, it has been non-disruptive. There's been no customer inconvenience along the way. Within the last, what, eight months, we have achieved a 280 basis point increase in the cost deposit ratio. The treasury operations are far improved. In certain critical areas like car loans, you have achieved 40% plus growth. So I would say that on current judgment, the amalgamation process has been a success. Yes, absolutely. But a last word from you, uh, Mr. Kant. You know, the political dispensation has to still take a call on, you know, whether banks will be moved to uh, 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 a Companies Act, whether the government will bring down its stake. Until then, is there, uh, you know, some freedom that can be given to public sector banks to, you know, recruit competitively, as they are saying, you know, Mrs. Bhattacharya used to complain that next to her was the Jamnalal Bajaj Institute, but she couldn't go and hire because you had to give a national exam. Is there some, uh, you know, facilities that can be given to uh, public sector banks until the law itself changes? Yeah. So I think this is totally a political call yes. the, about what we've discussed, the corporatization and bringing uh, public ownership instead of government ownership. But I think the government has done a lot in terms of uh, liberalizing uh, yes. the banks in terms of the huge shackles that were there. And the government's uh, one political will is very clear, and that is to give freedom and flexibility to the banks to work in an extremely professional manner. And that is so obvious from the, not merely the creation of the Bank Board Bureau and the fact that it has selected people like Mr. Chadda to head the Bank of Baroda, but also in terms of giving them the freedom to hire a lot of professionals across the board, and also the freedom to completely integrate it digitally and to get the best possible technical expertise. So the government is absolutely determined to give all possible freedom and flexibility to Oh no, I mean, uh, I think India has shown the way in terms of fintech. I think the UPI is now something which the IMF has advised that other countries should adopt, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, transactions, uh, uh, financial transactions, digital transactions. If it is a public owned utility, it works much better than too many, uh, you know, micro uh, uh, pay organizations. So clearly the government of India has shown its determination. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And let's hope that your voice is heard loud and clear and the next gen reforms actually come sooner than any of us dreamt. Thank you very much for joining.
Innovate. Enable. 